So good news to start the year, that is that we have secured £75,000 for the network for the next three years to support what we do, which is just feels brilliant <laughs> to be able to continue doing what we're doing. And it's a testament to how valuable this is to people. So we're going to go on and tell you a little bit more about that. And um, before we do that, I just want to introduce members of the um, CACN steering group who are here today, um, because we, some people are going to chip in here and there. First of all, um, Hazel, give us a wave, Hazel. And you, you might want to come off, uh, off mute and say hello. Hello, everyone. Um, I, my name's Hazel Blears. I've been coming to the meetings for quite a long while now and um, got to know lots of amazing creative people. And I'm trying to raise the profile and the support for arts and creativity in Cumbria, if I can. Perfect. Lovely. Livy. Just, Livy, do you want to just say hello? Hi everyone, um, thank you for letting me become a steering member, I'm really excited, <laughs> hopefully I'll be bringing some tech to uh, the, the steering group and bringing more of a, a youthful perspective, um, <laughs> hopefully, we can, <laughs> hopefully we can bring some more tech into, into yeah. the video, so I'm excited to be working with you guys. Livy's our newest member by the way, I should have said that. Um, Stefan. Hello. Um, I'm Stefan Esquire. I run a theatre company called Ragged Edge, and I'm on the steering group as well. And I think I bring the youth focus. I, I do you? <laughs> no, I'm not sure then I do. <laughs> okay, Anne, also quite youthful. Oh, thanks. I'm so glad I qualify as quite quite youthful, <laughs> but not very youthful. Um, <laughs> good morning. I'm Anne Waggetnot. I'm the director at Florence Art Centre near Egremont um, in Copeland, West Coast Cumbria, and I'm also um, a practicing artist myself, mainly printmaking, but also some exciting environmental and community projects too. Thank you. Chris Bridgman. Uh, hello. Uh, being quite not youthful, I'd say that Anne is very youthful, um, but it's all relative. It's just numbers, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I, I'm Chris Bridgman. I was um, until fairly recently artistic director at Kergate Arts and running the Arts Out West Rural Touring Scheme. That post was made redundant in autumn, uh, but I'm just uh, getting to grips with a new job with Upland uh, Visual Arts Network across the border in Dumfries and Galloway, which I kind of largely got because of this network. Uh, Anne, um, had some involvement with them they did a presentation on the uh, Friday call at some point and then advertised the post through um, Cumbria Arts and Culture Network so go us <laughs> and go you congratulations on the new job uh, Richard are you there Richard Oh, he's got no audio well this is Richard Foster he's been with us uh, since the beginning of the network he was chair and then vice chair, and now he's a backbencher without portfolio. Um, and Tom, do we need Good morning. To so uh, again, so I am chair of a thing called the National Rural Touring Forum, which is the umbrella organisation for all the rural touring schemes. There's about 25 across the UK. So in Cumbria, we've got, as Chris has mentioned, Arts Out West and also Highlights based in Penrith. Um, and I got a bass guitar for Christmas. So I'm obviously a musician too. Indeed. Uh, Andrew Deakin. Hi. Uh, young at heart, not so much in body. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm Andrew Deakin. I'm a programme director for Full of Noises based in uh, Barrow in Furness. Great. Thank you. So those are the steering group members who are uh, able to join us today. And it's really nice to see everybody. I'm just going to uh, ask Tom to start a little presentation and I'm going to explain to you what this amazing funding news is all about. So, and then at the end, there'll be time to ask us questions. So go ahead, Tom. Okay, that's us, Cumbria Arts and Culture Network with a nice new logo. Okay, right, next. So before we kick off, I just wanted to remind us again that um, we're here to connect, to empower, to champion and to extend or grow the culture sector in Cumbria. Next. 
So the money, the grant is £75,000 over the next three years, starting from now. Um, it is being uh, given to us by uh, the Nuclear Decommissioning Agency through the uh, Sellafield Limited Social Impact Programme. Um, I'm going to hand over straight away to Hazel Blears, who's going to say a little bit more about um, what the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority is and what, social, uh, what the social impact programme is at Sellafield. So, um, Hazel, would you mind coming off mute and, and tell us, Hazel, a little bit about that? Yeah, um, the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority is basically the public body charged with decommissioning 17 uh, post-nuclear uh, sites in in the UK. So that includes Scotland and Wales, um, as well as all the sites in England. And um, it's a massive mission. They spend something like uh, £2.4 billion every year. Um, the numbers are really hard to get to grips with because we can't imagine that kind of money. Um, and uh, this is taxpayers' money, basically. And I've been uh, involved with the West Coast really for a couple of years now, just trying to help them with regeneration, that kind of thing. Um, and I said to the chief exec at the uh, NDA, uh, you're doing lots of great things, but you lack coherence and consistency and you're not making as much impact as you could from the money that you're spending because it's all in kind of one off projects that don't last and don't make a difference. And um, all, all credit to him. He said, you're right, Hazel. Um, so for the last year, I've been trying to help them um, have a much more kind of intentional way of spending their money to make social impact. Um, on a personal basis, I'm a huge fan um, of arts and creativity, and I absolutely believe that it, you know, it, it makes impact way beyond the, the single performance or the, the actual artistic content. And in terms of changing particularly young people's lives, it's got an amazing reach to be able to do things you know, that other things just simply can't do. So what I try to do in my work with the NDA is get them to be more enthusiastic about arts and creativity and how that can drive um, education, skills, communities, all of those things. Um, and so Sellafield is the biggest element of uh, the, the NDA and spends the most money. Um, it has a grants program of about 10 to 12 million pounds, which is you know quite significant anyway. But what it also has it, is it has a supply chain um, of all the people who provide you know goods and services and work at Sellafield, which is absolutely massive. Um, so the NDA supply chain is something like 1.6 billion pounds every year. So the grants money is very welcome. But if they can mobilize, you know, the massive potential in the supply chain by putting requirements in the contracts that when people want to tender for work at Sellafield or indeed any of the other NDA places, uh, now the law um, requires them to have at least 10 percent of the award criteria for all their contracts for social value. Now, what I'm trying to do is make sure that that 10 percent in lots of places includes arts and creativity as well as education, skills, um, all of the, the, the kind of traditional things you'd work at. So it, it's a bit of a work in progress, but I think we've made a really big breakthrough here with the um, support for the network, um, which I'm hoping will catalyze even more mainstream um, money going into arts and creativity. The thing that's really good about this grant is that it's about infrastructure. Um, and what often happens is people are happy to fund one off performances or events or whatever, um, because infrastructure is not sexy. Um, that's the thing that gets left behind. But we all know without infrastructure, you just can't make things happen. And the network is a key part of that cultural infrastructure for the whole of Cumbria. The, the final thing I, I want to say is that obviously Sellafield operates in West Cumbria. Their remit is around Allerdale and Copeland, but um, Gary McKeaton, who's basically the head of social impact at Sellafield, uh, he's a very keen photographer and artist. So we've, we've got a little bit of a, a way in with Gary and Gary's very supportive. Um, he, he's, he's trying to be as flexible as he can around this so that it's um, people who um, are doing things that actually have an impact for people in, in the areas uh, around Sellafield. But the important thing is that we get the whole of the NDA actually looking at creatives and 
The other thing that, that you might be interested in is in my latest report for them, I've recommended that they recruit more arts and creative people rather than just people with science and engineering qualifications in order to give them a much more diverse workforce when it comes to problem solving and creativity. Um, and they're quite excited by that prospect as well. So hopefully we'll get more people um, with a creative background, um, leavening the mix, if you like, in, in, in the engineering kind of industry, which will be quite uh, groundbreaking. Um, yeah. So we'll get employment and skills as well as hopefully the support for the, for the sector. So um, work in progress. Sellafield have a social impact strategy, which you can find um, on the internet, which is published. It has five um, priorities, resilient economies, thriving communities, the supply chain issue that I've talked about, uh, trying to get people sustainable incomes through skills and education. And finally, collective impact, which is probably where we come in, because that's about collaboration and partnership. And that fits really well with the Sellafield social impact strategy. Um, so onwards and upwards, they've also agreed to support the creative people and places um, bid to the Arts Council um, for West Cumbria as well. So hopefully we'll get you know, some funding coming through um, for that. So we, I think we all just need to keep encouraging them because this is their first kind of venture um, into, in, into this area, but hopefully they'll get returns as well. And we can do some measurement of the impact, that kind of thing, so we can prove that we're not just here doing you know lovely things but actually we're making a difference and helping them with their strategy thank you hazel and um hazel had a lot to do with the initial conversations uh, and the initial sort of contact if you like with uh, nda and sellafield so we're really grateful for that can you just restart the presentation tom please um we're going to go on now and just explain a little bit about uh, what it's going to what it's about and what it's going to enable us to do so I'll just let you look at that. It's a three year project. It's about providing more opportunities ultimately for people uh, living in Cumbria, particularly West Cumbria, but not uniquely. Um, it's about improving mental health and quality of life by broadening access to the arts. And the way that we're gonna tackle that is by developing CACN, our network, in a sustainable way. Um, because as uh, Hazel has just said, increasingly the arts and culture network is regarded as a vital part of the county's infrastructure. Um, and as Hazel's quite rightly said, this is such a big step for us. It's, it's final acknowledgement that infrastructure matters every bit as much as individual projects. Um, and you you might know that we've been considering an application to the Arts Council for some time, but in actual fact, we decided to go in this direction instead because um, the NDA were better able to understand and support um, the idea that infrastructure matters. Uh, and infrastructure is what we're about, supporting each other. Um, so we've, we have shelved the idea of an application to Arts Council for the time being, although that might come in future, in favour of uh, this approach to NDA and Sellafield. So next slide, please, Tom. Um, it's called a post-pandemic recovery programme, which sounds very, very grand. It's really an expansion uh, of what we're doing now. So it's about a programme of training, workshops, mentoring, uh, online meetings. It's about growing and strengthening arts and culture organisations and activity in Cumbria. It's about better connecting organisations to each other and to the rest of the, when I say the rest of the county's cultural infrastructure, I mean it's about connecting West Cumbria to the rest of the county. West Cumbria is where the need is greatest in terms of the fact that the levels of engagement are lowest. But my belief in the argument I made in the bid is that without connecting West Cumbria really successful to the rest of the county and to the strength, stronger infrastructure elsewhere, we're not gonna make a difference. Uh, crucially, this bit is also about connecting creative practitioners with cultural organizations across West Cumbria, but also across the wider county. So it's not just about organizations by any means, it's also about individuals. Next, please, Tom. So I'm just gonna to hand to um, Stefan here to say a little bit more about 
why we've come up with this the bid in this way and how. Stefan. Thank you. Um, so this is really a summary, a reminder and an introduction for those of you that are new on this call to what CACN has been doing. Um, I'll do a Chris Whitty and give you some stats. There have been 87 calls since February 2020. That's 3,823 attendances with 127 guest speakers. On social media, there's 1,115 Instagram followers. There's 877 on Facebook. The Twitter account has 1,631 followers. And our mailing list, possibly the most crucial indicator, has 368 people signed up at the moment. And on the graph that I'm showing you, that's all from zero. Um, the website is a relatively new development and a, a very valuable one for the network. Uh, and for those of you that have spotted it, there's the opportunity to put your own profile on there. Said the man that still hasn't done that. Um, there's been training opportunities, unconscious bias, writing skills, etc. And then behind the scenes and in front of the scenes, there's been all the collaborations. Artful Ways would be a flagship one, but it is but one example of what's been going on and what the network is all about. When we ran a survey quite recently, we tried to capture this question about how has the network uh, created fruitful collaborations? And I, I personally think this is one of the most exciting things about the, the network, and that's the collaborations across art form. I personally love getting out of my theatre ghetto and meeting and working with other people in different disciplines. And I think that's what the network can really, really thrive through. Um, the network is all about advocacy. It's all about uh, you. <laughs> uh, so it would be great, uh, given what Kate's about to tell you about the plans for the, the next year or two, if you can bear in mind that getting people along to these meetings and getting people involved helps strengthen the whole offer for everyone. Um, and I also think it's really important that we celebrate the strength of the cultural offer in this part of the world in face of what is still a terrible imbalance in provision. <laughs> it's very metropolitan still. And if we can show off the skills and talent of this part of the world, I think that will be a really good way of making the case for better support nationally. Um, so those are stats. And um, please sign up to the website, but please encourage people that you might know, other practitioners, other organisations to get involved, because the strength of the organisation is really about you people as members and what you offer to each other. Thank you, Kate. Next, next Kate, please. Yeah. <laughs> next, if you could restart the presentation, then we're going to talk about exactly what it's going to mean and what we've said we'll deliver, because anybody who's ever put in a funding application, we'll know that you have to be very specific. So our objectives in this uh, bid, in this project, if you like, are, are here. And I've tried to show how they connect to the, the sort of priorities of the network. So I'll just let you look at that for a second. So it's about the joined up ecosystem. It's about supporting you, whether that's an organization or as an individual creative practitioner to innovate and to explore new ideas together. Um, it's about promoting what you do, advocating for the wider sector strategically. Um, it's about a really inclusive training and development program that is um, uh, as, as often as we can make it free to access. And really importantly, it's about supporting young creatives to enter the sector, it's something that we all believe in here and we've talked a lot about as a network in the past. And so now we're sort of nailing our colours to the mast on that. Tom, next slide, please. This is what the money will enable us to do. Some of it is carrying on doing what we're already doing. So these uh, great regular Zoom calls, the, the quarterly meetings, uh, things like the newsletter and social media campaigns and support. But some of it is new. So it's new because it's come from you and it's we've taken it really directly from the suggestions and requests you've made in the surveys that you have completed. Um, so we're trying really hard to respond to the things that you have said you would like 
And for example, workshops, smaller workshops um, online, whether that's discipline by discipline or in person, um, sometimes online, sometimes in person, sometimes by geography, sometimes by discipline. Um, those are things that we will plan in, in due course in more detail. There'll be a new CACN podcast, which will pick up and develop and explore in more detail the sorts of things that we talk about on Friday mornings. Um, there'll be more social media support, more coordinated media campaigns. Um, we will support at least one sort of countywide um, engagement project, creative project, um, along the lines of uh, Artful Ways. And we'll develop the training program so there's more of, of it. And the last thing that we've said we will do is develop the idea of the mentoring and skills swapping program, which is another thing that's come directly from feedback through surveys. So what does it mean to you? The next slide, please, Tom. It means more training sessions more often, smaller workshops that will enable you to get to know more people better, if you like, uh, by discipline or in your area learning from each other through mentoring and skill swapping, um, the chance to contribute to a podcast uh, or to listen to a podcast so that we understand the bigger picture better, online meetings like this, which will carry on and thrive, um, and potentially freelance opportunities, employment opportunities, so that you can be part of delivering network of, uh, activity. I should say that there will still be a really strong emphasis on volunteering because up to up to now, apart from the, the administrative time that we pay Amy for, everything has been done um, voluntarily. There'll still be a considerable volunteer effort, but part of what this bid is about is pe paying people fairly for the work that they do. Um, and it's going to be great to be able to do that. But, so. As we move forward, it will be about getting that balance right between um, paying for some work and then continuing the volunteer uh, contribution as well. OK, next slide. What now then? Well, first thing to say is that um, I've completed quite a lot of funding applications in my time, and this one was turned around on a sixpence in a very impressive way. Um, it was handled very impressively by um, Sellafield and the NDA, because we were part way through an application to Arts Council, we had the information to hand, we'd done a lot of spade work in terms of preparation, so it happened quite quickly and the response came within a fortnight, which is unusual by anybody's standards. So now um, we need time to think. We needed the money quite quickly because there's no guarantee that we will have any money next year if this didn't come through. So we needed that security in order for even the basics to continue, like our Friday calls. But now we've allowed ourselves a period of time to think and to plan. So that's what we'll be doing over the next couple of months. We'll be, um, we'll be working out what the recruitment of freelance staffing is going to look like exactly. We'll be developing the training programme in the background and the workshop programme and um, working out exactly when and where those will take place. And in the background, we'll continue doing what we do, which is our Friday calls, our quarterly meetings and our newsletters and all the contact on social media. So that's it, I think, from my perspective, but we're happy to take any questions if anybody has got any. I can see the stuff going on in the chat, but I, can't, I couldn't see what. So Tom, please do pick it up and Stefan. Yeah, I, I just saw, I saw, thank you, Kate, for that, first of all, and thank you to Hazel and to Stefan, too, because um, I think this is a really big moment, actually, for the network, um, and hopefully there'll be a little bit of noise in the press about it as well. There might even be a little clip or two on Border this evening for those of you that are lucky enough to receive Border TV um, in the north of the county. But I think, was it Rob said something about, I'm just scrolling back through the, through the messages because I was obviously running the, the PowerPoint, I think it was Rob that said something about this could actually access possibly Arts Council money in the future, the fact that we've already got some money from elsewhere. So do you want to just reiterate, Kate, that this isn't Arts Council money, and so therefore, A, that that's still a potential possibility in the future, yeah. but that secondly, and this is importantly for people on the call, it's not treading on anyone's toes for any applications for Arts Council money kind of from the Cumbria pots. Is that fair to say? It is totally fair to say. I think it might have been Derek who made the point that um, uh, it it enhances our possibility of securing Arts Council future, uh, funding in the future. 
And I think it'll allow us to apply for projects one by one, which is much more likely to be successful than asking them for infrastructure support, because that was going to be a bit like a square peg in a round hole. Um, on the other hand, applying to um, the NDA in Sellafield has just felt, felt like a very straightforward, natural process. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's not getting on anybody else's toes that everybody here is obviously still free to uh, apply for Arts Council funding and we'll do our best to support anybody who's doing that. Um, so yeah, any more questions from anybody? Yeah, Alex is just saying as well, Alex Dindley, such great news. The infrastructure is so important and so, it is so often what gets overlooked. I'm not sure people always make the connection between amazing creative projects and the underpinning infrastructure needed to make those possible. So I think I think that's absolutely a, a, a salient point, Alex. Thank you for that. Hey, uh, Lorna is saying, love that mentoring is included. My coppicing training, because we had Lorna on just before Christmas with her beautiful slides about the wonderful, in fact, I've got with me here something that I bought from Lorna. This is the only Christmas decoration that I haven't put away <laughs> yet. It's a beautiful little thing that I bought from Lorna at Rydal just before Christmas. Um, my coppicing training involved a big mentoring aspect and it was perhaps the most useful element and it creates a community and informal mentoring that continues afterwards. Applied Arts Scotland have a great mentoring scheme. Um, so you never know, Lorna, we might come banging into your door to find out why it's so good and whether it's something that we can nick there as a, as a, as a process or as a plan or as a, as a network. Um, Hazel. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I was just thinking then, um, it might be a good idea for us to, to give some thought to um, how we go forward with this, because the reason I made the points about the infrastructure is I'm always frustrated that people just expect, um, you know, arts projects to appear as if by magic um, and they don't fund what you call the boring bits, which is the enabling um, part. So this is, this is a first step to doing this, but I just wonder whether it's worth maybe in the steering group um, just thinking through how we might reinforce it through getting them to commission some um, specific things now, you know, if, they, if they've agreed to fund the infrastructure, um, perhaps in the past, places like Sellafield, perhaps they haven't had a lot of applications. And I know that they support the Florence Arts Centre and absolutely no intention to intrude on that. But if we can get to a place where we can show that involvement in arts and creativity has all those benefits around health, well-being, thriving communities, then we might be able to expand their interest in supporting arts and creativity, um, you know, because they, they put a lot of money into education and skills, and that's the right thing to do. But actually, investment in people's participation in the arts can often make them more likely to develop skills that then means that they are able to contribute economically to the Sellafield mission. So I, I just wonder if there's, you know, a space for some thinking from us um, to, to, to have some more conversations as we go forward um, with the NDA about how it's not just um, supporting the network, but could they be more ambitious in yeah. actually supporting some of the arts activities that the members undertake? Indeed. And I think it's absolutely the start of a relationship uh, with them and the start of a journey. Um, Rob? Yeah, uh, just following up on what Hazel said now, I believe um, that Aldo, um, who's been on this call in the past, is part of a big project called Deep Time, which I think might have used some of that cash, Hazel, um, to develop a project, which is just starting up uh, possibly next year. And myself and Harriet and, um, oh, crikey, uh, Cumbria University, that's it, might be doing something on the West Coast on the back of that. There's a proposal going through at the moment, uh, which we should hear about in spring. So they are kind of trying to get artworks commissioned in that whole area on the on the west coast in particular but i think they want the west coast to seep more into the the central lake so there's kind of this osmosis so it's not seeing as this separate parcel so you know plans are afoot uh, to to use funding from them to to try and make big things happen and i know they've got big ideas for sure thank you rob um jill Just come off mute, Jill. I don't know, sorry. I, I've just put something into chat. This isn't West Coast, but it is absolutely on the nail here. Um, Kennel Community Theatre, which is a completely inclusive bunch of people, including blind people who are disabled, people with learning difficulties, school kids, people in their you know, 80 plus is our oldest number. 
Um, and we need a new director because Chris Taylor is going to stand down as who founded it. We're, it's our 10th anniversary year. We're going to celebrate some, but the whole thing about infrastructure is really crucial to us. So I've put something in the chat and if anybody has any ideas, please get in touch. Because the Thank social you. impact is terrific, I think. Thank you, Jill. Um, any other questions, observations, comments, thoughts from anyone? George. Yeah, George. <clears throat> Hello. Well, um, first of all, congratulations to all of you for who, who've achieved this absolute landmark. It's, it, you know, I, I know from my experience with bids, it's a heck of a lot of work. And thank, thank goodness for people such as yourselves who can be bothered to put all the work in. Um, my question sort of um, really revolves around one little point from one of the slides about young people and um, something uh, focusing on their, their, how we can actually help them to take up the arts and to become creatives in themselves. And um, one of the, 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 the things that I've found is that very often when we are all operating as our own little individual entities, very little can be achieved in the long term, but then collaboratively through something like CACN, I'm hoping that um, you know, more can be achieved by us getting our heads together and being able to be aware that we do have the support and the potential to be able to offer certain community initiatives for young people um, already. Uh, we don't necessarily have to come up with new ideas for funding. Um, uh, in my view, very often, um, we often, just with a bit of wider thinking, we have these opportunities what we are lacking is often the links with schools or um, um, youth organizations and that who and and it's a two-way process where they can links can be made so that when opportunities arise these things can be done and I think a lot can be done through um, mutual um, benefit I mean certainly from our point of view um, we're in touch with a lot of creatives who tutor on courses and very often when people are in the area that is talent available for initiatives with schools and things like that which I think wouldn't even actually cost any more money they'd just be able to be offered as benefiting kind if you like as um, you know maybe if I don't know Kate whether there's any whether you've got a quota for match funding or anything like that but uh, um, I would just you know like to offer the fact that um, a place like Higham can um, obviously you know might be able to help in that respect for match funding in in sharing some of the expertise we 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 draw in over over the year that's really positive and thank you george um this this whole bid is about collaboration it's about working together it's about recovering from the pandemic together um as as individuals and as organizations and that's what the money is there to support um uh, what I will just say finally is that we do need time to get our head around the detail now. So please don't expect, um, you know, uh, job opportunities this time next week. It is going to take a little bit of time, but, but we will keep you uh, posted and we will get things underway as soon as possible. But it's just so amazing to have money in the bank. And I must say that LEP, uh, Cumbria LEP, who host the Arts and Culture Network and who there have, therefore have received the money, have also dealt with the whole thing extremely efficiently, um, which is partly why we're ready to go. Uh, and we need, as a steering group, to crack on. But if you've got suggestions and thoughts, then please do get in touch. You know, this is a very democratic and collaborative, and we'd love to hear more from you. I'll just put my email in chat now. OK, Tom, back to you. Thanks, Kate. Well, just sort of um, seamlessly seeking from what George was talking about, opportunities for young people and how, as you've seen in that bullet point that Kate showed, it's very much one of the priorities of where we go with this, some of this money going forwards. Um, it's great to have the Knotted Project, you know, on our doorstep in Kendall, which Natalie runs. So Natalie, I just invite you to come off mute and just tell us about um, the Forge Festival, which is a great thing that you've pulled together, again, with, with an application and successful funding from the Arts Council, I believe. Tell us a bit more about that and how people might become more involved or, or become more aware of what, what you're doing. Great, thank you so much. Um, well done on the funding, first of all. It's absolutely amazing to hear. And 
everything that everyone has said is resonating so strongly with me and what we champion at Knotted Project. So I'll introduce myself first of all, um, if you don't know who we are, um, with the Knotted Project, we uh, make work with and for young people. That's what we do. Um, we are a physical th theatre company, primarily um, trained at East 15 Acting School in physical theatre and then uh, created the Knotted Project about nine years ago. Uh, based in Kendall, but we work across the Northwest and kind of our base is in Cumbria. That's where we kind of want to focus all our work with young people at the moment. Um, yeah, so the ambitions of Forge Festival, we last year made a film with young people during the pandemic uh, called Forge the Future. Um, for those of you who didn't see it, that was um, a film filmed in isolation. Um, all the young people kind of filmed on phones and had all these amazing techniques that they used. And it was about them kind of saying what they wanted to say as young people coming wasn't coming out of the pandemic sadly it was kind of in the depths of the pandemic at the time and how they felt and how it was affecting them and their future ambitions and a huge thing that came out of that was um, the impact that it's had on their mental health and um, so we made this amazing film and we just couldn't stop the work there it had to continue and um, our kind of ambitions at Night Project is to champion talent development with young people. It's about um, giving young people in Cumbria the opportunity to work with amazing professional artists, have a, incredible artistic experiences and know that there is a place for young people to be creative here. We understand lots of people need to go away and train, but you can come back and you can have an exciting artistic um, career in Cumbria. That's kind of what we're championing. Um, so we came up with the idea of Forge Festival um, and we, again, really interesting to hear about how you build your bids and how long it takes. And yes, we took about six months to build, uh, build partners and a bid uh, to Arts Council, which I'm really happy to say has been successful. So we've had significant um, funding from Arts Council for this two year project and also lots of other partners, um, Lakeland Arts and uh, Windermere Jetty are our key partner, which are amazing. We're also working with Wave Forward, who are a um, young people's mental health charity based in Kendall. Uh, Great Place Lakes and Dales have supported us, Institute for Social Futures at Lancaster University. And then we're also working with amazing uh, Career Support South, Care Support South Lakes, Theatre by the Lake, M unit, Barra Culture, Pink, Whistling Crew Productions, and supported by the Tully House and the Brewery Arts Centre. So that's me like kind of reeling off all the partners and the amazing people that are involved. And um, just because I'm trying to whiz through this as quick as I can. Um, it's a really massive project. And um, so let me tell you more about it. We are in year one, we're going to work with four diverse groups of young people from across Cumbria. Um, they will work with a professional artist to create a response to the theme, the future fight. And that piece of work will be whatever they want to make and however they want to create. Um, the four groups that are involved in year one, we've got um, a Forge Youth Dance Company that is going to be working in partnership with Theatre by the Lake uh, up in Keswick. Then in, we've got uh, the Knotted Project Young Company um, who are going to be based in South Lakes and they'll be working at Windermere Jetty Museum. Um, and I'll be directing that company. We then got uh, the South Lakes Young Carers who are gonna be based in Kendall and supported by Brewery Arts Centre. And then we've got M Unit, which is a group up in Carlisle um, for young people who are black and brown, and that's supported by Whistling Crew Productions and Tully House. So we've got really four amazing young people's groups from across the county. They're gonna be creating wonderful work with great, great artists. Um, there's a filmmaker involved, there's also a professional musician, and they'll be creating this artwork that they will bring to Windermere Jetty Museum in May and have um, Forge Festival, which is going to be kind of a culmination of all the work they produce. There'll be films, there'll be talks, there'll be the live performances that they show. Um, and yeah, we kind of want that event to be amplifying youth voice. We want to hear from young people emerging from the pandemic, what they want to say about their future, how they want to move forward. Um, and yeah, we're going to be inviting lots of change makers and hopefully loads of people from the community to come and see those young people and see what they have to say, which I think is really, really exciting. Um, we're going to be supported by Way Forward, as I said, throughout this. And there's going to be counselling and mental health support for the young people throughout the process. Um, 
There's also going to be uh, four local schools from the different areas that we'd love to engage with. So if anyone has connections with local schools in these areas, I would love to talk to you more about that. Um, and then in year two of the festival, um, we kind of amplify everything. We work with six different groups, including Pink and including uh, Barra Culture. And then we also, um, we're gonna have early career artist bursaries. So there's gonna be five bursaries of a thousand pounds for five young people to create new work. There's loads of um, artist development, mentoring, um, opportunities for them as well. And then in year two, we'll also have professional companies come into Windermere Jetty to perform. So we kind of want to create this ladder system of young people in schools can see the young companies performing, the young companies can see the early career artists, and the early career artists can look to the professional companies for the future to say, this is the next step and this is where you can go and raise in aspirations. Um, the Naughty Project Young Company, we're recruiting for that at the moment, and that's for young people 16 to 25 who are interested in creating something with physical theatre with me. Um, we're going to be starting that in at the end of February. Um, yeah, I think that is everything in a nutshell. I know I've like, gone like this as quick as I can because I know there's so much to get through, but um, it's a really exciting project. Our ambition is to try and make links across Cumbria and work with loads of organisations and partners to, we believe there's so much stuff happening in isolation and it needs to be connected and we need to work together. So, so much of the stuff that's been said this morning has really, really resonated strongly with me. So yeah, thank you so much. And if you've got any questions about any of that, I'd be more than happy to take them. A couple of quick questions, Ashley, thank you. Um, and do put your contacts in chat um, when yeah. you finish this. But, um, so Virginia, who leads Eden District Council, is asking, are even young people eligible to join the company, Natalie? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we are open to everyone, basically, for TKP Young Company. It will be someone that needs to have access to the South Lakes. There are travel bursaries available to support young people, um, but it would be needed to have someone who can kind of access Windermere Jetty. But there's also going to be other companies like um, Theatre by the Lakes Company up uh, in Keswick, if that's a better fit as well. OK, lots of people supporting the project, Natalie, and congratulating you. Um, Nick, Nick Greenall saying, sounds great, Natalie, I have school and youth group contacts if of any use so Nick's just put that into chat as well Definitely. Just, to, just and just to reiterate young in your books Natalie is what roughly what age yeah so this um project is primarily aimed at 15 to 25 year olds um however many of the groups that we're working with um are going to have slightly younger groups as well so I think the project will range from about 13 up to 25 um but yeah that's the young people that we're working with um, I know that I'm 31. I know that sometimes I get classed in the Ancient. young person category, but not quite, not quite young enough for us. <laughs> All right, great. Lovely, Natalie. Well, thank you. I mean, that kind of just sowing the seeds, really. I'd love to think that over the next couple of years, you know, we'll certainly, as a network, engage with you more. And if you want to come to people here for support or ideas or contacts, then you know where we are. So yeah. well done again on getting the funding and good luck with it that the, the hard work starts now i suspect even though the funding application is hard work the hard work starts now absolutely does yeah there's a lot to do but it's going to be really exciting but we'll we'll keep you up to date and uh, on progress and we'd love all of you to come to the festival great thank you natalie and do have a look at look at chat of messages for you there um okay 20 past 10 and um, we're going to finish at 10 30 but just before we have a little summary of where we're at um stefan Esprit, our vice chair is organising a the next quarterly meeting, which is going to be at the end of January. Um, and Steph, we mentioned this, I think, just before Christmas. But Stefan, tell us a bit more about where the planning has got to and what the ambition is. Do you see what I did there? Yeah, I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully, can you see that? Yep. Thank you very much. So this was flagged up in the newsletter this week um, in response to an ongoing question about when these meetings are held and when can we get to meet each other again despite COVID. Um, that lies behind the planning for this next quarterly meeting. So it isn't a typo. It is a Saturday. It's Saturday the 29th in the morning at the lovely Braithe in Appleside. This is a very exciting collaboration with Braithe Trust and the Changing Culture Programme, which some of you will be aware of because many people involved in the network are either hosts or mentors for that project, which has been running for two years and it concludes this month. 
And this event at Braithe is meant to celebrate and bring together the learning of that uh, course. Changing Culture Programme was a collaboration between the University of Cumbria, Arts Council and the Braithe Trust, and it provided an opportunity for young creative entrepreneurs to receive training over a two year course that had great access. There were no charges for the tuition and there was lots of support to enable those young people to develop themselves. Um, and our collaboration with Braithe gives us the opportunity to give people the chance to meet up again, should you want to. COVID um, safeguarding is all over this. Uh, but for those that don't feel comfortable attending, of course, it will, will be run on Zoom as well. So it's a hybrid meeting. I've put the blurb there about what the central question of the meeting is. Um, as Kate uh, described uh, for our last quarterly, what we're doing here is, is taking inspiration from the, the Arts Council's um, new policy and taking the the headlines of how they're proceeding with their strategy to provoke conversations and our response. So that central question is what will lead the meeting. And we're still pulling together a very exciting list of keynote and, and other contributors for the day. But again, it will definitely include an opportunity for everyone attending to get into discussion with each other, to make it as practical as possible, to make sure that we all come away from the meeting galvanized into thinking, OK, what can we do about this central question? Um, there's a bit of a strand today, a bit of a theme, and that is young people again. And I don't mean to disregard what Derek has raised in the chat about opportunities for people of all ages, uh, but I think it ties in with what Natalie was saying about creating um, opportunities and an expectation that Cumbria does offer something for people starting their creative careers. So the Changing Culture Programme has been all about that. It will finish at the end of this month. Um, we will hold our meeting in the morning. And then we will be publishing details soon about what the rest of the day contains. And in essence, it's going to be a showcase of what those um, students, that student cohort, have been up to. It's an opportunity for them to show some of their practice and for people to meet them and to network in the lovely setting of Braithe. If you haven't been, um, it's fantastic. And I believe we have someone coming on to speak to us at one of the Friday Zooms sometime quite soon. Um, so in the near future, we'll be putting out an invitation for people to sign up for in-person attendance. Um, that's necessary, of course, for the catering, if nothing else. Yes, there is a free lunch. Um, and hopefully a very exciting um, menu of uh, creative activity in the afternoon and then into the early evening. But we're waiting for confirmation of those details. So there's more to come. But the purpose of mentioning it today is to just to emphasize that we'd really love to see people attending in person or on Zoom on that Saturday morning. And please spread the word and put it in your diaries. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. If you'd like to stop sharing your screen now, that's great. Um, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have a pregnant pause while we work. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Lovely. Thank you, Stefan. Because part of, to be honest with you, again, this seems like such a long time ago, but I remember when we started these calls back in February 2020, um, part, of the, part of what people found from Doing the course was just learning how to work zoom and how to share screens and how to do little presentations on a screen as opposed to in person you know and that can be useful for pitching and all sorts of other skills that we all need to do from time to time in the arts and cultural community so uh, it's funny how there's little spin-off attributes that come out of um out of these calls right thank you uh stefan uh that looks to be like a great morning stroke day and i will certainly be there myself so thank you for all the work you're putting into making that be good uh, 26 minutes past 10. Um, Kate, do you want to share any final reflections um, before we flip away into the start of the weekend? Okay, so I was just thinking about the Arts Council's investment principle, um, as I do, uh, I think a lot about those, uh, and the ambition and quality uh, principle that is underpinning the conversation when we meet on the 29th of January. And what an amazing example of that the Forge Festival is. Um, so ambitious and, uh, and I'm sure it's gonna be such high quality because you, you can tell in, in the way that you've presented it and all the thought and planning that's gone into it and all the partners who are part of it. So uh, congratulations, Natalie, on getting it this far. And I really hope that the network, uh, well, we will be here for you 
and for your project and to, and to do the connecting for you or with you whenever you need us. So please do come back and please keep in touch and please think of us because people uh, I'm sure will be ready to help you whenever it's needed. Um, so there's loads to look forward to, isn't there, in the next year, even though it's difficult still, and let's not um, underestimate how difficult and uncertain the times are still for so many people. But we'll be here every Friday, keeping you company. Um, bear with us whilst we get ourselves organised to deliver some of the additional activity. Um, please come on the 29th if you feel uh, like you would be comfortable to do that otherwise join us on zoom and look out for the information that's coming so that you can sign up um thank you for being here because it, there wouldn't be a network if it wasn't for you you are the network and thank you for turning up week after week um or thank you for dropping in from time to time both of those are valuable and a funding application and a fancy project is no good if people don't come so uh thank you very much for being here so often that's it from me thanks, thanks Tom. Kate. All right. Next week, we've got Colette Conroy, who is the director of the Institute of the Arts at the University of Cumbria, who's going to talk to us about um, what they're doing there, how things have evolved over the years and where that institution is heading. And also a little bit about herself. And also Nick Greenall, um, who I think is on this call, is going to talk to us about the fantastic sounding Windermere Science Festival, which is taking place later this year. I think it's um, the first iteration of it. Um, so really looking forward to hearing from Nick about what that's all about too. And as ever, if you've got ideas for people that you think would be good to, for us all to hear from, or if you're doing a project yourself or something to celebrate or something to promote, then just get in touch and use the Facebook account and also Twitter and Instagram as well to help promote those things. Thank you to everybody. It's 10.29, we're gonna finish a minute early. Our meeting's great when they finish early. Have a great weekend, everybody. Love to see you all and see you again soon.